the internet keeps providing us with the most random and crazy drum hack, so I gotta put them to the test. Probably the worst thing you can forget on a gig is... So this is a tom with straws taped to it. Tom and straws. The world's driest snare drum. What if there's like a piece of metal to give it that cracking? So you have now taped a tambourine Ching -ring. thing. You adjust the amount of tape you put on it. Tape always fixes your problems. Closer. So go close. See, you got little tiny stirrers for snares now. With the invention of the towel. This towel. is now the world's most jank looking drum set. Let's see what it sounds like. Sounds all right. You gotta get the proper towel placement now. Whoa! Now what have you done? Well, I just turned the ching ring around so that the jangles are a little looser. I would be happy with that. I got 1,000 coffee stirrers, gaff tape, towel, and a ching ring. Start with a couple straws. We need a little bit more snare response, so we'll have to tighten our, our snare side head. Okay, I had a new idea. I'm gonna take a couple straws and then put a thin strip of tape across the middle. <laughs> Which, I don't think that did anything. So now let's uh, mess with the ching ring. He did have the elusive gaff tape X in the center though. With the invention of the towel, That sounds nothing like a snare. <laughs> Just had another genius idea. I think if we put some straws on the, the top and uh, kind of bounce them on the rim like this and then hold them in place with the tape, there'll be pressure on them and might kind of bounce up a little bit and make it kind of snary. I could mess with this the rest of the day, but the camera says it's been 17 minutes and downbeat was in 15 minutes, so technically I'm late. So uh, let's see how it sounds. It sounds like a snare just without the wires. Now what happens if you forget your entire drum set? Okay, not really. You're kind of SOL at that point and no amount of hackery will save you. So instead, let's check out this hack from our boy Joe, the croc wearing cowboy drummer. We got a tom arm, a throne, a snare stand bass, and there you go. Finally, I can stop hating on pearl tom mounts. Pearl tom arms are good for just about everything except for mounting toms. But now my drum throne is really painful to sit on. That looked like a revolver from a Tarantino movie for a second. Throne. Check. Tom arm. Check. Snare stand. Check. I was gonna use this throne, but do you hear that? There's like a layer of plastic inside of it, so this might make a good snare actually. Practice rig complete. That works surprisingly well. So if you have a spare throne and a couple extra parts, then you also have a bass drum practice rig. Now that one was pretty simple. So here's yet another from the Cowboy Drummer. Convert your pedal for a cocktail kit in seconds. First, we uh, put the beater on from the wrong side, then take the chain off and put that on the other side. And there you go. Beater comes out goes back in, chain comes off, and it's not gonna work on this pedal. Got another pedal, except we have the same issue. I do think there's another way to go about this though, so we'll take off this end, then do that. <laughs> then we'll loosen up the chain and beater holder assembly, slide the shaft out, we'll flip this around, put it back together, and that's still not 
gonna work. I was actually so excited to try this that I put an EMED on the rezzo side of this floor tom to make a little bootleg cocktail kit. But that'll have to wait because I really don't feel like buying another bass drum pedal right now. Now, as you could imagine from doing all this scrolling, trying to find these drum hacks, I end up seeing a lot of interesting stuff, but a lot of it's not worth testing or even testable to begin with. Double-ended sticks. Got two different sounds for one stick. Maybe I should do a video about weird drumsticks one day. Dude's grooving on them tables. <laughs> I've discovered something really stupid. If you want a kazoo sound, but you don't have a kazoo, a snare drum has this little breather hole. Hey guys, got this new bell brass kazoo. Get it? Because it's a cymbal roll. Today I'm demonstrating the rebound clutch and how to use it with some creative percussion special effects. Remember creative percussion? They're the ones that make this thing. Got a tuna can shaker. Some little jangly bells. Some jingly bells. I don't know about that one. Oh yeah, that's that's the money right there. Really cool and a lot better than uh that ride. Remember the EMAD I put on that floor tom? Well, they come with two foam rings, but you can only use one at a time, so you're left with an extra. But what if I told you that sounds like a drum figured out a way to make a 14 inch EMAD for your snare with this ring? We used a clear G1 drum head upside down in the center of the plywood and drove a screw into the center of the head to anchor it. We placed the wider of the EMAD rings on the drum head to use for reference and then pressed the knife into the head at the edge. Next, we removed the foam ring and slowly rotated the drum head in order to cut the center section out. I've never cut a head like that before. For installation, we simply removed the batter side counter hoop, set the EMAD foam ring on top of the primary drum head, and then placed the modified head on top of that. Nice and fat. I really do like the method they use to cut the head, but that requires me to go to my shop because I don't have the right tools in here. And I'm entirely too lazy right now, so I'm gonna use what I have. So first, I'm gonna put this piece of tape roughly in the center. Then I have this divider compass thing roughly set to half of the size of the drum head. And I'll go around just uh, making some marks. Really four is all you need. And right in the center of those marks is the center. We'll get the ring back on and then reset the dividers to go from the center to the edge of the foam. And because these dividers have a point on them, they'll scratch right through the head. Now we take this off. No, we don't. We, we leave the head and we'll get rid of this tape too. Foam, head, and rim. And now you have a Remo Pearl controlled sound coded Evans EMAD on a DW. This is definitely my favorite so far. This head is 100% staying on this drum. Now let's try this quick and easy bass drum fix. Looks like a tuning fix by loosening the two tension rods on the top of the batter side. Sounds a little bit better, so let's see if it makes this bass drum sound any better.
I mean, yeah, of course it sounds a little bit different because you tuned it differently. Beats dirty. If you don't follow Arthur, you definitely should. He has some of the craziest and weirdest ideas when it comes to drums, and all the sounds and beats are super creative. He's got the reverse concert tom Lego brick snare, but what I'm interested in is the Lego bass plate cowbell griro. Slight issue though, this is the only bass plate I have, which is a little bit bigger than the cowbell. So we gotta do a slightly illegal building technique. From a crazy sound design standpoint, this thing is awesome, but as far as like an everyday kind of practical thing, it's a little bit awkward to play, takes some getting used to, but uh, still has a lot of potential. I guess the lesson of today's video is you can't win them all, or that I just suck. Either way, if you like this video, be sure to subscribe, and also check out this video where I test even more drum hacks.